I'm Deborah Richmond, and I have here to show you today some more of the quilts from my quilt collection. I like to collect highly unusual quilts, older quilts, usually just tops, quilts that were never finished. What I love about this style of quilt is that it's often someone who doesn't know very much about quilting and was given it a try, or it's someone who um, does know about quilting, but they have like a lot of extra pieces. And that's what this one is. This is all about orphan blocks. Now, orphan blocks, in case you're not familiar, is when you have a block, it was going to go into your quilt, but you had one extra for whatever reason. That usually goes into a drawer, and you think, I'll do something with it another day. This quilter, she found out what to do with hers. So she, you can see she had these really large churn dashes. I like that these are very traditional block. Um, it is done in pale pinks, but really all kinds of different colors. Blues and pinks um, is what she's got it done in. And they're really large size blocks, which is kind of unusual. Usually we'll see like 12 and a half or smaller. These are probably 18 just a guess but uh, I like that these are leftover blocks then now if you move out to the side you'll see the here are some more leftover blocks these are nine patches I'm gonna show you here's one there's one there's one so very simple nine patches most of them are of two different fabrics a few of them are kind of scrappy more than two fabrics my guess is what happened with this quilt is that, um, like most of us, she had a lot of um, orphan blocks. There were a lot of quilts, that, a couple of quilts that she started and maybe decided she wasn't going to finish. But she could certainly make a quilt out of these pieces and it would be something that would be a utility quilt, something that her family would really use. So she took, when she had enough of the extra pieces of quilts, she went ahead and she put it together here uh, in one quilt. Now it was never finished. I don't know why. The whole thing is stitched by hand. I can see that because it's a, it's a quilt top, so I can see behind that. Um, it's just a really nice example of taking what you have, putting it together and using it. Even if it isn't spectacularly beautiful by most people's standards, it's something your family can really use. And now we have this particular quilt, one from my collection. Um, going with the theme of orphan blocks, we again have a really prominent orphan block right here. This is clearly a quilt that I'm pretty sure was made by a beginner, and I absolutely love those. Um, and uh, there's uh, several things that kind of give me those clues. But um, first I'll show you, she had a piece of orphan block here at the top. She had a full orphan block here, and then she had a lot of, this looked like it was part of a block maybe. Some over here is just let's piece a bunch of pieces together that she had. So uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of different fabrics in here, which lead me to believe that this was probably for scraps left over from dresses, from shirts, from clothing that they were making. Um, I'm kind of, for some reason, I'm kind of guessing this was a young girl probably who was learning to sew. I recognize that because I learned to sew in the 70s when I was a teenager and this is kind of the thing I would do. The reason was my mom had a box of fabric. She said I could do whatever I want with it. I wasn't, um, I, w I didn't have a lot of things available to me. I wasn't going to go out shopping for fabrics. Um, at, but so I used what she had and I did with it what I wanted. And I used that sewing machine because it was new too. So this I think is a beginner. Now I'll show you how she's put it together here. She has pieces, you'll see. This is a huge piece. And then she has a row of muslin that is right across here and a row of muslin here. So here's another huge piece that she put together. Down here is another one she put together and down here and then the two below. So she did it in larger pieces and so that's because you know that the larger your piece gets as you're piecing onto it, you start to get a lot of distortion. So she figured out that that's about as big as she could get and really work with. Now it's put together in a very strange way, which is again why I know it's a beginner. Um, it on the back has a, it's not a muslin, it's not a gauze, it's a lightweight fabric, but it's still um, lighter than cotton, heavier than gauze, um, but it is, makes this quilt very heavy. This is a very heavy quilt, and it's only a, well, I think it's a top. I would call it a top. I have a feeling that maybe she didn't know a quilt should be put together in um, a top, which is what you see, the, the batting, the fluffy in the middle, and then the fabric on the bottom. Those three layers quilted together are a quilt. Sometimes 
Um, they used to not use batting if they did want something that was very thin and very delicate, a more of a summer weight quilt. But these days we usually use batting. We have a lot of different um, lofts, a lot of different types of batting we can pick from. So we really can kind of customize which batting we use to which quilts. This one has none. Um, I see here that she's got these pieces I, I really like. This is truly crazy, crazy uh, piecing. And I'm pretty sure that what she did is she started with some of these pieces here and then um, she had some pieces that were odd shapes. Again, probably from, maybe it was her mother was sewing um, and she had these odd shapes to deal with. So she, so she took them and just put them right on top of what she had going already. And then the circles you see, same thing, right on top. First she pieced it, it's clear on the sewing machine. Then she zigzagged the whole thing, and that's how it's put together. Sometimes you can hand quilt those pieces together, the top, the middle, and the bottom, or you can now, we do them on the sewing machine quite a bit. She did this on the sewing machine, and she used a zigzag. She wanted it to be sturdy, heavy duty. So a lot of it is pieced first, and then she zigzagged through. So every seam you see, she has zigzagged through every single seam, every piece. And so that, of course, took a lot of time, I'm sure, uh, but it really certainly holds that quilt together. If she had any areas that really were uh, not fitting that well, or maybe her seams were too small, this would make sure that they were down and not going to go anywhere, and they have it. Now, she also did some zigzagging like straight through some pieces, too. Um, maybe it was a little puffy, so she thought, well, let's, let's weight that down with some stitching, and so she did that. I like how this block, like it looked like everything was going straight and then, well, let's just throw this on the side. I love that. And then again on this side, let's put those on the side. So she was really playing with what she had and really creating. Now it's not a finished quilt because there is no binding on it. So it wasn't quite finished. I don't know if she intended to put more on the back or not. Even the backing is pieced. There's like a large section and then it's pieced with the, uh, with the muslin again. So like I said, a very unusual construction which leads me to believe it was a beginner. It allowed her to use some things and just start creating. It allowed her to start playing with different ways of putting seams together, whether she was putting them on or she was seaming them together. Um, and it allowed her to really play with the sewing machine, really use the sewing machine, because because there's so much zigzag on here, she was really um, getting a feel for the machine. I'm pretty sure she was a beginner because a lot of these are not real straight. Some of the zigzag follows the seam real well, and some of it is kind of all over the place. So this would have been one that um, she was learning. I'm pretty sure she was learning as she went along. So those are two for my collection. Click subscribe below and you'll see other videos that I come out with. I'm gonna have more in the future as my collection keeps growing. Thanks for joining me. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can do so here by clicking the subscribe button. That way you'll find out about new videos as they become available.